Well, hello again. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband and my four chickens. I'm so happy to have you along for this chin wag because that's what it is. Just a chat about this and that. And yeah, time to get together. Time to sit down and have, well, I'm not going to say slurp of tea. No, my aunt picked me up. It's not a slurp. It's a sip. We can't hear you. It's not a guzzle. So I'm just having a sip of tea. Nice to have you along. Beautiful day today. Yesterday it was pouring. So what does this chin wag all about? Well, I'm just going to chat really. I don't know. I never have anything set too much in my head. Anyway, thank you for all my all those lovely messages that I received about baby. He really is gorgeous, isn't he? So, what have I been up to this week? Crafting? Yeah, I've done a bit of crafting. I'm still hooked on project bags, very much so. Um, so no knitting. Well, it's been ever such a busy week. I don't know where it's flown by. Flown by. It's unbelievable. So yeah, I'll show you what I've been making. Uh, we got a fascinating fact about the albatross, actually. Uh, we got a little film. I'll tell you about that when we get there. And, oh yes, I've got a new phone. So I thought, well, I'll see what it's like in the kitchen balanced on the windowsill to do some cooking. So I made some buns. So that's up. The trouble with my kitchen is it's quite echoey. And I'm not too happy with the sound, but you let me know what you think. So I'm coming up, I'm sort of winding up TA because I was talking to someone this morning about it. And what I've told you, well, up to the bits where I finish, is it's just teaching. You know what I mean? It's telling you about, about what, you know, about the ego states about strokes yeah so you know you can really apply that and take that down yeah understand it and apply it but the next bit really well I'm not too happy about doing it on a vlog I really need to be doing it with you if you wanted it <laughs> um, and so if you feel you wanted it then you'd be going to see a counsellor wouldn't you but it's not something I would just sort of teach you and then you go off and work out because it might tap into well places quite honestly that y you don't want to go or you know anything like that so I'm going to be winding up TA soon so I wondered what you'd like in its place I was thinking of doing a little reading I've got a beautiful book and it's a monthly book, and I was going to read a little bit each month, very short. Um, but I've got to find out if these books are in the public domain. Um, yeah, the ones that are in the public domain are like, you know, oh, I have got The Secret Garden, I've never read that. Um, but I am not. don't think that's too jolly, is it? I don't want, you know, I want something nice about nature or... I don't want a Dickens one, you know, with all the characters in. Jane Austen, no. Um, so I'm for, I have got this book. It's called The Farmer's Year by Claire Layton, and I love it. But I've just written off to the publishers because that apparently, well, emailed them. That apparently is how you find out if they're in the public domain. So I'll wait and see if I get a reply. If not, I might work something out. I'll see. At the minute, I've still got a few TA bits to do, uh, but then when that's finished, I'm going to fill the gap, or I'll make my um, my uh, vlogs shorter. What, what do you think? I can make it shorter. I can put. I can show you how to do a little bit of crafting. Um, I mean, it's all out there. That's what I think. You can just Google anything now and find it. But hey ho. If you'd like me to show you something, let me know. Uh, if you'd like something specific, if you feel I can, you know, help you, then let me know. Uh, yeah, I have done some buns this week. Now, when I rolled them all out, it was a bit squishy. However, I hadn't pressed play record, and so the bit of the rolling out doesn't get done. 
Uh, but never mind. I, it's it's a start, isn't it? I mean, Pete can show you how he makes his. Um, oh, he makes a lovely bolognese. He can show you how he does that. I mean, he's a chef, so anything you fancy, let me know. Let me know. I do so love your comments, and I love people getting in touch. And uh, we have a good old chin wag about the chin wag, so that's nice. Oh, it's a sip. So I'll get on with the crafting, shall I? Got a few things to show you. That, yeah. So I'm on project bags still. Well, you know I like making them. So my daughter, now I'm going to put a photograph of her here. You've met my daughter Nicola, who's now the nanny, and uh, and her daughter Lois. Well, you saw her when I was giving her the quilt, didn't you? And for baby being two days old, I didn't think she looked too bad. Um, well, not too bad at all. <laughs> but Kim, that's my eldest daughter. Uh, she's, what is she? 69 she was born, I think. Ooh, does that make her 53 this year? I think so, something like that. Anyway, she bought some fabric because at the beginning of lockdown, as you know, she it, she felt sick when she picked her needle up. Sick. She's got three children, two boys and a girl, and the girl is the mummy of uh, my great-granddaughter, Mila. And whenever a button fell off or anything, there'd be a pile when I went round there Oh, Mum, can you sew those buttons on? Picking a needle up made her feel sick, and I think that was—I oh, think that was rubber banding back to school days. In TA terms, we call it rubber banding. It's like you've got a rubber band round you, and instead of feeling it now, you feel those thoughts from years ago. And I think she did at school. She didn't like it all, as lots of us didn't like it. And we didn't think we liked crafting. But she's realised she's made a quilt. She's done embroidery. She's now doing the most gorgeous um, blanket from Sandra Paul. Uh, her, her pattern. And it's got, she's just away. And away. Do you watch that? Bob Mortimer. <laughs> I'm listening to his autobiography at the minute. Yeah, he's a very, very shy man. And all of that gone fishing came about because when he had his heart surgery, his mate phoned him every day. And he said, I didn't want to talk to him, so I didn't. And then his wife said, is Paul on the phone again? Oh, no. He said it was a good little while before I actually spoke to him. And then Paul said, come on. As they say in My Fair Lady, move your blooming arse and get out here and let's do some fishing. I'll show you how. Oh, he didn't want to go. He knows Paul loves the river test. He went fishing with him. And he said, as soon as I got that rod in my hand and connected with that fish and nature, <gasps> he said, I loved it. And that's, that's you know, the offspring of that is those beautiful uh, programs and I do think that the uh, photographer, the, the person who films it, really connected with that thought of his because we see all the little spiders and the little this and, and the little dog and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous program. It's called And Away, his autobiography. But what a shy man. I mean, shy. He could hardly speak to people. Amazing, isn't it? How we feel inside. Anyway. Kim was rubber banding, but she's not now. So she's always loved, as my other daughter has, Beatrix Potter, because I brought them up on it. And we had this LP, and uh, it, it was little songs from Beatrix Potter. Bright and clean, bright and clean, cleaner than you've ever seen. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle doing her washing. It's the most gorgeous LP. And anyway... Because she liked crafting, she bought some fabric, but then she didn't quite know what to do with it. But now I'm making product bags. She said, oh, mum, will you make me some? So I made her one to put her, whoops, to put her needles and threads in. Because you know I've done two. I've given those to Lolo, Lolo, Lois, uh, for her nappy bags and things. 
but I've done one for Kim for her sewing bits and uh, we like we've decided we like the big pocket I've done a little bit of quilting down there and a straight line down there a pocket there this is Tiggy and then I like the big top well that's what she decided she'd like that bit that it's six inches fold over, so it's a three inch top. And I think that gives you a nice still bit of bag without this all getting tightened up. Well, I like them all, that's the trouble. And I did it with uh, that ribbon. So that is made, Mrs. Tiggis. I forget to show you. Cute little robin. And then inside, well, I went, well, I'll tell you that in a minute. Don't let me forget. Oh, I used the sleepy time one that I had it over and I thought that would be fine for the lining. So, I made that for her. And then, for me, I'm still trying out them, see which ones I like best. But I do like this one. It's two zips, and that is a pocket that goes right down to the bottom. And from side to side, it's lovely. So you can get a nice amount in that. And then, that's not too big, but you can get your bits and bobs. I used up bits for the lining. I really like that one. So I'm going to, but I haven't padded it because I didn't feel what I needed it for it required padding. However, I'm going to make it, her, Kim's iPad is 10, 10 by 6 or 10 and a half by 6 and a half and she wants, I'm going to make that one the same but to fit her iPad and I'm going to put some wadding in it so it'll be a bit of protection. So you've got the bits and bob, you know, the pocket for bits and bobs and the pocket for your iPad. So watch this space. I'm going to be doing that for her. And we'll see how that turns out. I was really pleased with that. She shows you how to put these little extra bits of fabric on here. So it sits nicely. It's, uh, you know, the, the one, is it? It's not Erica. I think it is. Erica Aunt. Something like that. I'll put it up anyway. But the way she shows you how to make them, you follow along and it is not difficult in the slightest. I like to follow along, stop it and do it with her. And then it works out well, doesn't it? Because I can tell you, because you've got, you know, you've got two pocket pieces in there, plus you've got the lining in there. You do have to think, hang on a minute. What's going on? So you've got the two linings there and the two linings there. But the way she describes it is, is so beautiful. So that. And then she showed you. Actually, I like it because you can get knitting needles in it. And um, I mean, you can even keep your knitting needles in it that I thought that you use all the time, you know. But she tells you, first of all, to make a, wait a minute, I remember what it's called. Oh, don't you hate it when your brain goes. All I can think of is Dragon's Purse. Why have I got that in my head? I can't think of the words. Anyway, it'll come to me. As I'm telling you, it'll come to me. But you make that, in one, obviously, sew it to that piece of fabric, and then you fold it in half. So let me show you. I've just sewn that on there by little doing little whip stitches. Can you see? I don't think you can. Little whip stitches along there. Yeah, you can see them. And then I did just a little line of stitches along there. And then I like the way I finished this zip off. I just did a little bit of, just a little running stitch instead of 
sewing it, you know. So before I was sewing it, which is fine, but I like this. It gives it a nice finish. Can you see? Dresden plate. I think that's what it's called. A Dresden plate. Very simple. You would think it's a bit tricky. But all you do is cut that shape out and then fold it in half and sew along and it makes the point. And then when all the edges, you just put that on the top and that's easy. You think, oh, I've got to turn the edges in. No, you just put two right sides together, sew round in a circle, but one of them, you've cut a little cross in the back so you can turn it inside out and get a nice circle. I'll show you inside. There we are. And so I wanted to use, I didn't want to use my really good, you look, you can look any side, I like it. I didn't want to use, oh mind you, that is a beautiful fabric. It feels lovely. I went to my local hobby craft. We've got one down the road and it's huge and you just don't feel like you're going to bump into anybody. It's super. And um, well, normally I'd say don't go there for fabric. It's that cheap fabric. No, she said we've had 350 new lines come in. And so this is beautiful quality and I, re I bought a stack of beautiful quality. So for the linings, um, you know, it's seven pound a meter instead of like 14 pound a meter for the, for the good fabric. But they also had a few good fabrics there from the V&A Museum and um, other ones that you know, but they're 10 pound a meter. So very good prices. So it's a lovely feel to it. And then, of course, I had the thought, well, do you remember? I don't know if you've been watching me. I've made these some time ago with English paper piecing. Just to see if I like doing it. And I made a big one. That's all Liberty fabric. I've taken the papers out. But I thought, well, all I've got to do is cut myself as put it on the on the bag, you know, excuse me, fold it in half. Now I've got another bag again. So watch this space. I'm right into um, project bags still. So I made a small one of these, well, a long, long time ago. Yeah, it must be 20 odd years ago. The background's faded a bit, but I don't mind. I'll show you it. It's exactly the same. You just fold it in half, sew down there, turn it in. It's so easy. And I made a quilt. Shall I stand up? Oh, here we are. It's just a small one. But I wanted to see what my different quilting techniques would look like. So I did some cross hatching. I did just some lines there, quarter of an inch. And then I carried that quarter of an inch out into the plain border. And it looks like a square, but it's not. That's the plain border, as you can see. And then you can see the... Dresden plate, it's the same, only tiddly ones. And I did put a little bit of um, wadding behind that. Just sewed it onto a square. And then two triangles and formed that pattern with them. But it's just a little, a little knee quilt really. Actually, I've got a, a wicker basket, a Faulkner and Mason wicker basket, oops, 20 minutes going over time, a, a wicker basket, Faulkner and Mason, in my bedroom, and that sits on the lid very nicely, and I've got all my crafting stuff in it. So I thought I'd show you that.
and that's calico just a nice quality calico you don't want a rough calico you want a good quality and then I oh yes you can see I just did a little bit just as I did on that other one just round the edge so I'm going to go off and I'm going to introduce you now to me making buns now let me know what you think the sound is like because I've got a mic here but I've just got this new phone you see and I thought oh I'll try my phone out but if you think the, the uh, sound is rubbish then we'll have to think again for if I do a little cooking slot I don't know it's if you want to watch it too so I say cheerio and see you the other side of that so what we're doing is um, we were going out for a walk um, and we got all ready, but it's hacking it down. So we decided to make some buns. We like buns, don't we? Do we? Like buns. we like buns. So um, instead of mincemeat, I've made them with mincemeat and marzipan, but I'm going to make apple and custard. So Pete's going to do the apple and custard, and I'm going to make the bin. Not the bins, the buns. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like other people's, you buns. know. <laughs> it's not like other people's YouTube thing, where they have it all and they do it all. We're a bit... Anyway, we do our best. So you want what are you doing? I'm He's doing the apples. I'm doing my nut at the moment. He's doing his nut. I'll Pe tell you why. Here he is. Peeling off yeah. little union jacks yeah. that are on every apple. Exactly. Plastic. Pla yeah, we don't need union jacks on our apples. But they seem to uh I've got, I've got seem to put them on. Here. Yeah. So he's doing six apples. We won't need six, <laughs> but we love apple, and my mum loves apple. We all love apple. Keeps her regular. Anyway, so uh, you don't want these for the chickens, do you? These this pair. So what? you need strong white flour. No, I'm not going to give them to the chickens. Strong white flour, um, <laughs> fine salt. I tell you what, I'm going to go off and then I'll come back on when I've got all the ingredients here. So um, I'll see you in a minute. Or shall I just chat? I'll just chat then. All right, salt, uh, yeast. Yeah, but you see, the trouble with me is I can't find half the ingredients. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's quick-acting yeast. Where's that? Where's the quick-acting yeast? It's to the left in there on your shelf. I think that's where I saw it last. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So this is what... It says quick-acting yeast, so that's what I'm using. Um, salt, plain flour, strong white bread flour, fine salt, caster sugar, caster sugar, caster sugar, quick acting yeast, milk and water, okay. Right, milk and water, oh. and an egg. We've got our chicken's eggs, so there's an egg, and unsalted butter. Well, I use Arla because I've got lactose intolerance. I use that, lactose intolerance. There we go. And what else? Oil for greasing. I don't need that at the minute. Right, so I need the scales. Good, that's funny shape. Funny shape apples. This one. Right. So now I'm going to weigh it all out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that in my mixer 
with my dough hook and I'm going to, I mean if you haven't got a dough hook just mix it round and uh, mix it round and what? What would you do if you didn't have a dough hook? You must have one. If not, mix it round and then you have to do all that kneading like Paul Hollywood, don't you? Yeah. But fortunately, I've got a mixer. So I'll see you the other side of that. Um, right, so what we've decided, I've just found this recipe for um, Chelsea buns. Oh, I love Chelsea buns, don't you? So what we're going to do, we're going to do half the mixture as Chelsea buns and half the mixture as apple and creme pat buns. We're going to see which ones work out. I'm sure the Chelsea buns will, but the apple and creme pat is a, what I'm making up myself, so we'll see if that works. Pete's got the apples on. He's going to make the creme pat, and, um, and then, because that needs to be cold. Otherwise, I'm going to be in that situation. Do you remember when I showed you the, what were they, Pete? What? Oh. I don't know. I don't know what you're when, when it wasn't quite cold, carrot and... Oh, carrot and leek. Carrot and leek pastas, and they weren't quite cold, were they? So he's doing the apple and he's doing the creme pat, and we're going to let it get cold. And then I'm going to show you how when I assemble it all. So I just wanted to show you what this looks like. Oh, now I just want some plain oil, love. Oh, he's, putting the plain plain oil. he's making some porridge. What do you mean, plain oil? You know, not flavourful, just. Um, I'd eat most of that, but I don't eat bread dough. <laughs> no, it's not nice. It stick. I was always taught don't yeah, eat pastry. Okay. Mum used to say it gets stuck in your tummy or something. I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, Were you told that? Yeah, don't yeah, eat the yeah, pastry. Oh no, you can lick the bowl for the cakes, oh, but yeah. you mustn't eat pastry or bread dough. See what it's like. Now, but I did oil my hand, so I'm going to put that nicely in there. As nice as I can. Not exactly for Hollywood, but there it is. <laughs> and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put cling film over the top of that or a plate. A nice plate will do. And I'm going to leave that for till it's risen for about an hour. So I'm going to come back on in an hour. But probably you'll be with me for the rest of the day because I can't switch you off. <laughs> so anyway... Yeah, I'll have to. Oh, I'll have to wa wash wash my hands and then edit it. I'll see you in an hour then. I hope it's not raining where you are. Ooh, see well, you in a minute. Doing? Eating porridge. Oh yeah, we're gonna have some porridge now. Oh, was that going while I was filming? It's a I know it's a kitchen, but people don't particularly want to hear it all, do they? Right, so we're going to make the creme pat, but as he makes the creme pat, I'll come back on board and show you that. You know how to peel apples and make apples, they're all cooking. Right, see you in a minute when I've turned it off. There you go. Oh, lovely. Pete didn't want to do the uh, creme pat, so I've just done it. What I've done is I've whisked up uh, four large eggs, four ounces of caster sugar, two ounces of plain flour. I've whipped all that up and I'm, I've poured it into a pint of milk that's been infusing with a, you know, one of these vanilla pods. I put it in, brought it nearly to the boil, then took the vanilla pod out, let it cool down a bit, 
And now I'm going to, um, then I'm just going to heat that round, stir it round, and I'll show you what it's like before then. I use lacto cream, but you use double cream, and it says a quarter of a pint, and then you mix that in. So um, I'll show you what it's like when I've just start, finished stirring. In case you don't know, you probably do. Oh, here it is. Um, you can wash those. So that's scalded with the milk. I washed it, and now I can put it back in my tube um, for another day. Because they're very expensive, and also that's what they tell you you can do. I should have put a penny on. Uh, 150 ml of whipping double cream. I'm hoping it doesn't ruin it because it was perfect. I'll show you this. I'll tell you what it tastes like. My friends know that I'm a great taster. Oh, let me get it right in the bottom. Fold it in. Now I've got to let that get really cold, and I hope it's not too runny now because it wasn't runny before. I think when it gets cold, now I'll show you that in a minute, but I'll just eat this. I'll show you it. There we are. All made. Now, I'm going to show you what that's like when it's got cold and when I do the buns. We'll see. I'm just going to clear up now. Oh, that is divine. That is truly divine. Right, I'll see you in a minute. I did film rolling it all out and putting all the apple on and all the custard, but I hadn't pressed play. I think because my hands were probably messy. Oh, this is the first time we're seeing them. So I put them all on a... Um, now, now, can I do this? I put them all on a tray and now they've doubled in size and I'm going to cook them. I'll show you what they're like. There they are. Sorry I didn't film it, rolled it all out flat, put the apples on, put the custard on, rolled it up, cut them in little bits and the same, I put then sprinkled brown sugar on, um, currants and sultanas and a little bit of mixed spice. So we got Chelsea buns and apple and what's name buns, we'll see if the apple and what's name ones burn, it's all that I don't know. Anyway there they are and they're all going now in the oven. I'll see you in a minute. So they've come out the oven and we're really pleased with them. Can you see them there? Let me just move this out of the way. It's a bit awkward this. There we are. So we've got apple and the apple and uh, creme pat and then these ones are the Chelsea. And uh, I said to Pete, do they need icing? And he said, oh no, they're they're just lovely. They're not they're not doughy, they're cooked enough. We, we had to eat one, as you can see, just to test it. Can you see it's not doughy? Look, there. It's all risen up lovely. And as I say, at the weekend, I just put lemon zest. Oh, I don't know if I said that when I thought I was recording and I wasn't. But I put lemon zest in the mixture. And then I made them into little loaf shapes and put icing on the top. And I like them because then I cut them in thin slices and have butter on them. Honestly, it's such a versatile recipe. You can do whatever you like. I think so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, doing this with me. And I'll see you in a minute. Well, I hope that uh, wasn't too bad and you, I can really say that both of those were same, made from the same recipe and the one I made last week with the um, lemon zest, they were all gorgeous Re and so simple. 15 minutes to cook, I mean five minutes to whiz round and uh, no trouble at all. If it wasn't for the weight, well you know my weight. <laughs> I'd make them every day. <laughs> Have them for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Yeah. Anyway, I forgot to show you the bag Kim made. Um, I noticed that they had the kit. It comes with the... It's all in French, but there is English as well. But it. Uh, I noticed Lovecrafts have got it, if you were interested. But I'm just showing you really to show you that Kim did it. And it, she made... Look at this. The most, ex she hasn't done embroidery before. Oh, I can't do it. 
But you see, they, they give you some beautiful threads and the threads are variegated. I love variegated threads. And of course, these are variegated. So when you start embroidering, yes, it's purple, but it goes to yellow. Look at the different colors. And so she made the little bag. She left it here by mistake. She was supposed to take it um, and her scarf she left. But it's a lovely little bag and she thoroughly enjoyed doing it. It's beautiful, isn't it? What work from someone who couldn't sew a button on or didn't like sewing a button on. Yeah, so there we are. I just wanted to show you that. So now, now what? I'm going to do a little bit of TA. I'm just going to finish off with the TA. It won't be this week. It'll be probably this week and next week. We'll see how we go. I don't like to give myself time limits. But um, I'm just looking at the magpies. They're all out there. Anyway, so I'm just going to do a little bit of TA. And then at the end, I'll tell you what's next. So we're going to do time structuring. So whenever people get together, there's six different ways they can spend their time. And I'm going to talk about withdrawal this week. Withdrawal, rituals, pastimes, activities, games and intimacy. But I'm going to talk about withdrawal. So you've got a group of people. You've been there. You know, you might be just, let's say, the doctor's surgery. You're sitting in the surgery. Group of people. Don't know each other. Well, if you're like me, you say hello to the person next to you and you get in conversation and you find out you're both crafters or you're this or that or this or that. But if you're not like me, chin wag, then you can sit there. And I must admit, often I've sat there too. And you withdraw. Well, what happens when you withdraw? Oh, you might think about your holiday or what you're going to be doing. Or you might think about what you're going to be baking. Or I might be thinking about this or that. Yeah, we all know. We go into ourselves and we think and that's fine. If we're doing it for that period of time, while we're waiting for the doctor to call us, that's okay. But some people do that a lot more when they're with other people that's their natural way they withdraw and I was listening to as I told you Bob Mortimer and all the time he was at university and then he took his masters he became a qualified solicitor he didn't go out with friends or anything he had friends in his life but all the people at university know that's why he got such good marks because he just worked because he withdrew yeah. Now, we think our own thoughts when we withdraw. Now, if it's only when we're at the GPs, that's fine because I'm getting strokes when I'm with my friends, when I'm with my family. Stroke, remember, a unit of recognition. Yeah, we need that to survive. Hello, how are you? Or, you know, I love you. All of those things, all of that, those strokes. Now, what we do is we make a bank of them, our stroke bank. And if we've got a good stroke bank, then just withdrawing at the GP surgery, that's fine. That's fine. But <clears throat> if we do that too often, and sometimes it's our natural way, or sometimes when we're feeling low and we have a bit of depression or full-blown depression, our natural tendency is to withdraw. Now we're not getting any strokes. If we don't interact with people, we don't get the strokes. And that can be damaging because we need the strokes. We need those, yeah, you know what a stroke is, don't you? The only strokes I can give or I can get if I'm withdrawing are self-strokes strokes I give myself and so sometimes people that don't engage with others very easily or readily are most likely in child or oh, they think it's a risk I might say the wrong thing oh, they might say something to me I don't like all these thoughts racing around the head in child 
so they don't risk it. But by not risking it, they're not getting anything back. So, like a camel in the desert, really, a camel can go a long while without water, can't it? But eventually, it needs a good old drink. Now, if people that withdraw a lot then have got a best friend and they chat and they get those strokes or they're with their family, yeah, if they can build up their stroke bank, they're fine. But if they don't, then they are at risk. They're at risk of running out of their stroke bank. And that's not a good thing. So that is one way that we spend our time, we withdraw and it's fine. Or if it's a habit, then it's one we need to look at maybe because of using up the strokes that we've got. So I'm going to tell you about rituals next time. Okay, out then. So what's next? What's next is a fascinating fact about an albatross. And then Kim said to me, oh, mum, she said, this weather, do show me a little film of the summertime when we had the sparkle on the sea. So last night I looked through the films I'd made and in 20, July 2020, I'd done a little film. We like going out in the summer, seven o'clock in the morning. We go out for a nice, you know, nice walk. And um, it was just one of our walks. It was probably a five minute film, but I cut it down to about 30 seconds. Why? Because it's a beautiful sunny day today, you can see. And we've been down the 39 steps. So I took a little film down there and uh, I've put that up. So yeah, it's today's film really, just a little bit at the beginning. And you can see the difference in the sun, summertime sun and December sun. Oh, so that's Chinwag for this week. It's been lovely to share it with you. I feel like I'm missing out on something, but I don't think I am. I know what it is. I'm not introducing Pete or Mum, am I? So we'll see what happens. I take each week as it comes. I think we're up to Harlow with Mum. And uh, yeah, Pete will read you another one of his stories. Oh, I don't know how to turn off the sound. So, yeah, we'll see. See what happens next week. Till then, you take care of yourself. If you can like and subscribe, please do. It does help the algorithm, as they say. Um, but um, thank you for all your messages and you take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next week. Bye. During flight, an albatross engages special tendons that lock its wings in place when fully extended, thus allowing the muscles to rest. The bird's other secret, how it soars hour after hour, involves its mastery of oceanic winds. At sea, albatrosses climb, turn and descend in continually repeated arcs, a manoeuvre that gives the birds enough momentum to compensate for that loss through drag. Only recently did scientists figure out how the birds are able to do this. Using high resolution tracking devices and special computer software, they found that albatrosses gain the needed energy when they wheel from windward into the wind to leeward in the upper part of the flight curve. The extraction of energy is smooth and continuous, states the scientists. The result? The bird can soar for hours on end without a single flap of its wings. These insights may help engineers design aerial vehicles that are more fuel efficient, perhaps even using engineless propulsion. <laughs>